I was cutting hedges in this field, I'm sure it's about 12 years ago. And at that point in time, there was a farmer called Robin McWaters who owned it. I'm in Glastry actually, just uh, north, a couple of fields north of the airfield. And Robin was telling me when I pulled the choke on the tractor to have a wee chat with him. He says, Ivan, I was a young fella, early 20s, working down in the bog there behind you see the water lying. It's peaty area down there and he had a bing of spuds. Now, for those who don't know, a bing of potatoes is when you dig your potatoes out of the drills and want to store them, a lot of farmers in the old days would have stored them out in the field, covered them with a bit of straw and then threw peat or soil over the top of them. So, and then they just came and got them ad lib as they needed them. So Robin was down with his horse and cart at the bing of potatoes and he was graping spuds up into the cart and he heard an aeroplane taking off in the aerodrome here which is only literally two three fields away and whatever happened it went out of control and it came down low over the top of them and crashed into the the wet area down behind me there which you can see behind me and sort of submerged herself in the peat and robin's horse tore off with fear back up the farm lane caught the trailer on the gate as it went out and ripped all the the saddle the uh, bridles and everything off and traces off the horse and left him standing there but he could do nothing because obviously she had just taken off from the aerodrome when she had been full of fuel and she just as soon as she hit the impact he says she just went into an inferno and the pilot lost his life obviously so that was what Robin related to me. So that's uh, some of the experiences that people were having living near the aerodrome. And Robin said actually a few years after the accident, he was plowing down there and he plowed up the man's cigarette case and his name was etched in the inside of the cigarette case and it was a Polish name. So I'm not even sure who the man was at this point. I didn't see the cigarette case, but Robin said he had it. Hello there. Uh, we're on Tullycavy Road here, halfway between Ballywalter and Grayley. And the wee story I'm going to relate to you is today by a wee plaque here. It was put up a lot of years ago to a fella called Axter. Uh, he was a sub of ten in the Royal Navy. And in 1944, he was out of Bally Halbert, 800 squadron, which incidentally still going. Now, as far as I know, I think it's the flight, the flight typhoon still, but that's what they are, sort of. Um, he was up practicing and training, then training, and a Hellcat, which was a six gun, Grumman Hellcat was a six gun uh, fighter, and no doubt was training for, um, on a, what do you call it, an aircraft carrier. But I, he was up here and apparently, remember Joe Bowden, Joe was actually done in the far side of a hill here, done the lavers, and he was actually ploughing and uh, the horses. And he said he heard the the, 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 the engine coming, he looked up and he could see us plane coming over, a big plume of black reek coming out. And it come down behind our house there, done, if you can look behind me, done in the quarries. And he hot a, hot a big, big rook and just skipped. And then she crash landed and she went down and she just went out of bits like, and he was still on her. And Joe said, he left the horses and he run like mad up across the fields here, across the main road, out over the noise, and down into the quarries. And when he got there, he said the boy was still on it, and they, I think he was pretty sure he was dead. She was burning furiously, but she was on bits. So then he, uh, he says he noticed at the time, he time that he had a lovely, lovely watch on his, on his wrist. So he beetled back and he says his dad was he had the other few folk that had a telephone in the country. So he went back there and the, they called the home guard and all the rest of the boys. And he came back down and he says, and the time he came back down to see the boy old watch was gone. So even in wartime, there's thieves of it. Between 35, 37 years ago probably. My dad was leaving and Walker and my dad. They cleared that bit of land, there's seven acres over here, and they took all, they were, my dad got him a hand with it, we cut all the timber out of it, and it was all one bushes. But while he was labouring it, and he ploughed it, and ploughed it, and worked at it, this here turned up, and Walker showed it to me. 
I have one of pictures of Hellcats at home, so I was looking for a number on it. There's a very faint number in the bottom of it, it's very hard to see, very indistinct. But if you look at the damage in that and see where it's all ripped, that happened in a split second of an explosion. Because you were coming out of Valley Hilbert, she'd be full of fuel. And she was fully armed because he was doing practice runs with guns, no doubt she's just bent bang. But you can look if you look at the bottom of it, you can see all the wee split pins still and and the big in here in the back of this crown and it's like a castle nut. And the hydraulic fitting in the front of it. So I looked at a uh a high books of planes and stuff at him and it was it looked it looks to me it's a bit of the uh, hydraulic system film the carriage, which would probably work out right because she belly flopped. You didn't have wheels rolling down, she belly flopped onto the ground just and just literally blew the bits and the critter was killed. But that's why there's a wee plaque here and that happened and I'll just check and tell you. Aye, uh, 4th of July, good day, Independence Day, 4th of July 1944. And that's what happened here on a lovely summer's day in 1944. Uh. During the war, during the war, they used to have target practice for the Spitfire planes. And down by the ship where the young pilots come over, and the target was dra drawn behind a, a, another plane, and they used to shoot at it for. Uh, or to get their aim right, I suppose, whenever they're in, in, in battle. But anyway, the one day we were, I was looking out there, and there was a plane going over with a target top behind it. And uh, what happened was the plane, uh, the bullet cut the the, the target, the tow into wire, and the target was left free. And it was over the sea, but it was full of air, and it came flying over and landed on one of our fields. And I looked out, looked down the railroad down below, and there was nothing but bicycles coming, coming by the dozen. A young woman, an old man, I should say. And it was an old man by the name of Willie Ager. He, an old bachelor, he got to the target first. <laughs> the target was made of silk, pure silk. And the women wanted the, the, the uh, target for wedding dresses. But they had to stitch up the bullet holes on it. <laughs> so <laughs> that's what. That's what I remember. But uh, the target in itself was cone shaped. Square, four, four portions to it. An open end and an open end at the back. And as the, the wire was opened up, there's a wire around the top of it, the, 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 the mouth of it, and it was towed behind the plane and it filled with air. And planes, the young pilots fired at it. So that's what it was made of. It was made for wedding dresses. 